You don't see a lot of movies today made from original ideas for the screen, and an even fewer number of those are pushed by the original artistic vision. While sometimes the results aren't really as great, there are a few diamonds that emerge. Evolver, a 1995 horror, teen romance, sci-fi, action, video game slash movie, is somewhere in between. Before I go any further, I'd like to discuss the opening credits. If you've seen the film before, or looked at the thumbnail, you'll eventually realize that what you're looking at is a schematic for Evolver. Maybe this will inform you as the viewer of the inner workings of Evolver, or foreshadow its darker roots, but nope. It's meaningless wire designs, it's just used to pad the runtime. I'm, uh, I'm gonna stick it down here while we move on. Nearly every single character in this film is a stereotype. And while that's not always a bad thing, it's very apparent. Kyle Baxter, our leading teen, is an edgy hack lord. As such, he likes machines better than people. But that never really comes into play as he's almost always around someone else. Either it's his friend, uh, that girl from down the street, or his family. Given that he's the protagonist, Kyle has to have some kind of moral fiber that's, you know, shows that he's better than everyone else. And it's, it's bent by his friend Zack for the plot to even occur and continue. His friend Zack is a pervert and a swindler. At the age of 17, probably, he's running a gambling ring around his friend's video game success. He convinced his friend to cheat at a contest in order to win, and he even went to the length of trying to record girls changing in the locker room in order to sell and make the money back he lost in his gambling. He's a terrible human being, but without him, none of the story would have happened. Jamie Saunders, played by Casty Ray, is the girl next door. She has her own incredible VR gaming skills, and she kind of rivals Kyle in the Evolver contest. Um, that, that's about it. She really just plays the, the love interest, kind of loses all of her character after that moment. The true villain is Russell Bennett, played by the lovable John Delancey of Star Trek The Next Generation and My Little Pony fame. Bennett's inability to move on leads to his inevitable demise, and really, because of that, people die, a company probably goes bankrupt, a family is traumatized, so many terrible things just because of this one guy. Paul Dooley plays the desperate CEO in an oddly not stereotypical business owner fashion. While Bennett tries to push his faulty and dangerous toy that harbors old defective military technology, desperate CEO just wants to find a way to bring his company money. He wants to let the young kids have fun with their video games and I wanted to create a techno toy that kids would play with. Really seems pretty genuine about it. Cindy Pickett plays business mom. A single mother who must balance the struggles of dealing with her kids and their terrible attitudes, and the intense real estate world of 1995. For a movie filled with humans, there's no real humanity in it. Everyone's kind of flat, and the overall acting is subpar at best. Where this movie really shines is its final and most important character, Evolver. Now, with no real feet, he becomes the most enjoyable character pretty quickly. He's curious, he's got a drive to learn and improve himself, and he does just that. I mean, granted that his improvement leads to horrible, gruesome murders and his descent into madness and hatred for humanity, but hey, it's still a plot. It's still character growth. Evolver focuses on a young teenager after he alters a VR gaming contest so that he wins instead of... What was her name? Ah, there we go. Jamie Saunders. She's not forgettable. Kyle wins a toy robot by the name of Evolver, the same name as the game of the contest in the video game. The two go head to head in a battle that was supposed to be a game. This movie clocks in in around 91 minutes, which is just barely enough to qualify as a feature film. As some of the scenes seem to stretch endlessly for no point other than to pad the runtime. There are so many little tiny setups that 
should have payoffs later on, like rigging the gaming contest or peeping on girls in the locker room while they're changing, that have no consequences. Much of the story is pretty predictable. Each scene leads relatively easily into the next, and there aren't any zany twists that come out of nowhere. Which, I mean, what can you expect? It's a $5 million budget movie from 1995. There are a few things that I'd like to point out that don't directly affect the story, but are strange choices made by the production crew, specifically the writer-director Mark Rosman. I've tried to contact him about the film, but I have heard nothing back. Mark, if you're watching this, I would love to hear your opinion on why these things were left in the film. Naked Teenage Girls. A very long shot on this. Evolver Vision. This shirt and vest pair. Smoking weed in a private business. Reading out what's on screen. Armor piercing lasers. Naming your weapon project Sword. How Evolver never gets legs. Now this this one I'm particularly confused about. Whether or not it's just a, a lack of funding or you didn't think of it. But why doesn't Evolver ever evolve legs? You you foreshadow his maybe leg growth. I just I just don't get it. Make a make a suit for a dude to wear that looks like a robot. Having this as your shutdown sequence. Using an inflatable alligator to insulate you from an electric current. This. I guess it's not your style. It's not. I could make it my style. A kaleidoscope splitting a laser, and that laser can also burn through walls, but not the kaleidoscope. While there are a lot of problems, one thing I can't fault this movie on is the actual prop for Evolver. The practical effects employed look pretty decent for a $5 million budget. Every single moment it's on screen is a delight. Now, is that compared to every other moment and Evolver scenes just being better than dumpster fires? Maybe. The first death at the hand of Evolver is also the highlight of the film. It's when we truly see Evolver begin down his dark path, first tasting the blood of his creators. Man. It's a really fun scene, and unfortunately the character that dies is one that's not really developed much at all, so there's no emotional impact on us. And once again, it just shows that we're supposed to care about Evolver and not the humans. While this movie follows a simple story and has stereotypical characters being hunted by a strange slasher toy, it's a pretty fun film. I'd highly recommend it, especially because of the subtext. Addressing the hubris of mankind, us creating that which will destroy ourselves, very similar to another movie from earlier this summer, about a robot that hates its creators and wants to end life. Huh. I swear, I'll cut your fucking throat.